friends, and welcome to World Build with Us, the podcast where we create fantastical worlds with help from you, our listeners. My name is Rob Hilferty. I'm here with my co-hosts, Courtney Staples, Daniel Quinn, and Christopher Prunty. On today's episode, we are blessed with a patron prompt that explores the afterlife. This is from Jacob, by the way. Jacob, thank you so much for supporting us through Patreon. That's always huge. And Jacob's prompt sounds like this. The literal afterlife could be the soul going somewhere like The Good Place or something plainer like D&D or a mind upload like an Amazon Prime's upload or the Bobaverse novels. I don't know what the Bobaverse novels are. I hope someone else does. Nope. No. Okay. I've heard of them, but I haven't read them. I've heard they're good. Ah, all right. Well, we're, we're, we're going to have to mostly go from D&D and The Good Place, I suppose. Uh, But this might be a second chance for some purgatory, hell, or the Elysian Plains. Maybe it's stopping point while you wait for your party members to go resurrect you. How much time passes from the soul's perspective? Did you complete a jigsaw or fight off hellhounds? And that is the afterworld prompt. Uh, We're now going to go ahead and give our tenets, which are basic building blocks for the setting, that are always true. So who wants to give our first tenet? I do. All right. Chris, go ahead and hit us with the first tenet. Uh, I wanted to do a reverse in the fact that uh, most people don't know what is in the afterlife. I wanted it to be no one remembers their life before the afterlife. Oh, that's interesting. So you that's... start with a blank slate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So so that's that's pretty cool. So The curious question that I have then is that if everyone forgets their lives, how do they know that this is the afterlife? It's either that or everyone believes that they woke up with amnesia because you didn't come back as like a baby. Well, I'm I'm sure maybe some people did, in which case that's extra weird. But um, imagine being stuck as a baby for all of what is potentially eternity, right? Horrifying. Yeah. So are you saying that when they go to the afterlife, they lose their memory or when they're restored from the afterlife, they lose their memory? When they go to the afterlife. I also think that would be, have implications because imagine you were literally a very good person in the afterlife. You did all these nice things and then you're resurrected and you realize you're a brutal warlord and you're like, huh. All right about yeah, yeah. <laughs> but what what I do find interesting is that I mean I, I tend to believe that we are like a like our consciousnesses are a collection of our experiences, and so when you show up in the afterlife and you're an adult with no collected experiences, that is a pure, real, clean slate. So I think that I like the dichotomy that you know you're a good person in, in the afterlife when you're really some kind of a horrible tyrant in the mortal world. I think that's kind of interesting. Am I the baddie? Uh, Potentially, (laughs) yes. I mean, you could be like, uh, you could be like, oh man, oh, I get to do a Civ reference. Okay. So you could be uh, Gandhi in the afterlife or Gandhi with the weird Civ 1 bug in the mortal world where he's like a horrible warmonger once he gets nukes. That's the only thing that was keeping uh, Gandhi in check. The lack of nukes. It's, it's funny because it sounds like, Chris, you've just created out of this afterlife the veil of ignorance. Um, and I believe it was John Rawls, the philosopher, who talked about that, where like to create, uh, to have like a, a fair moral judgment, you'd have to subtract everyone's perspective so that they could judge in a vacuum um, the behaviors of those outside the veil. So in a sense, like the people in the afterlife, they don't know who they are. So they don't know the consequences of, you know, they don't know what their, their living selves were up to. So whatever judgments they make in the afterlife, they're made from like a veil of ignorance. So it's really, it's, you just kind of like randomly created that you know, without thinking about it. Apropos mm. of nothing or <laughs> little save the prompt actually. Yeah. I had this idea of kind of similar to the concept of gods maintaining power based on how many followers they have. Um, spirits of the dead can fade away as the, people are forgotten in like the real world um so like if somebody is a a grand king from ages ago they are still remembered their spirit still exists flourishes in the afterlife but some like random peasant who just died a month ago like maybe nobody is thinking of them and their spirit has already faded out of existence interesting 
So there's, so there's something, I mean, who's the person with the quote that says you die twice once when your body goes and the second mm. when the last person speaks your name. Um, I, I feel like that's, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting from that tenet, Courtney. And I think that works mm -hmm. pretty well. So their, their existence in the afterlife hinges on being remembered in the living world. Yes, essentially. Okay. Like how long they kind of last will hinge on how well known they were. Um, but I sort of had like a part two to that. I don't know if it counts as a fully separate thing, but um, branching off of the fading spirits, like once they're faded, they can be reincarnated naturally. Um, so, so, so that peasant who was forgotten like a month after his death can get reincarnated pretty quickly, while the oh, like never forgotten spirits will never mm. get another chance at living unless they are like forcefully resurrected. Oh, that's that's so neat because it, it it creates an if people are aware of how the afterlife functions, which I don't know if they are, but if they were, it would create an incentive to make yourself as famous as possible so you can live forever, essentially in the afterlife. Or for those who did really accomplish nothing or were not remember, they can continually live on the world. So depending mm -hmm. on the circumstances of the world, if the world is a terrible place, then they might want to be famous, and if it's not a terrible place, they might want to remain anonymous. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> But when we add in Chris's like clean slate, the person who approaches this from, I can't wait to live forever in the afterlife, maybe this clean slate version of themselves is like, oh God, why can't I pass on? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is a torturous existence for me to live on in this mm -hmm. way. But because you're still remembered in on the mortal plane, it's a matter of, oh yeah, you're going to live forever, but like it's this intense pain forever. Ooh, for this yeah. Well, it depends yeah. on the perspective, right? Like if, if the afterlife is a pleasant place, then and they won't, they won't know where they came from. And let's say they're a famous king that'll last there forever, then it might be great for them. But if it's an unpleasant place, like you're saying, they don't understand why they have to persist so long. You mm -hmm. know? <laughs> well, it doesn't even necessarily have to be unpleasant, this afterlife, just a matter of to them, this consistent perspective of like this trapped feeling of immortality, you know, becomes a bit too much for them. Whereas before they weren't thinking about that on the mortal plane. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, like it may or may not, depending on your perspective, like if living yes. forever is okay for you, then <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> Absolutely. And this actually dovetails pretty nicely into one of my tenets, which is uh, there are multiple levels within the afterlife and one of them is reserved for dead gods and above. Mm. Um, so, I mean, the idea that there's this, I mean, we can take that as a perspective shift, right? Where the afterlife kind of just is without moral judgment and it's just a plane of existence, but there could be multiple levels. Like in, in my prompt or in, my, in the tenet here, I was thinking that this could represent the fields of Elysium or it could represent Asphodel or it could represent any of the, you know, any of the panoply of really interesting afterlives that we might have. It could be hell or it could be heaven or it could be Valhalla. I like the idea that there is layers to afterlife in, in existences. Do the gods also have their memory wiped? Well, see now, because you add it as a tenet, I have to imagine that it's true. So I would say mm -hmm. probably, yeah. Did you establish that there are gods with your tenet, Chris? Oh, no, Rob well, just did. Well, I did. Oh, yeah. oh. I, thought you, I thought you were saying planes of multiple planes of existence, but there's a, there's well, gods. That there was one plane. Of one of them gods. is for dead gods. Oh, yeah. for dead gods in particular. Yeah. Okay, so I guess it depends on what we think dead god means. So is that like someone who is super famous, like worshipped like a Jesus figure, and so they're pretty much forever going to be in the plane following Courtney's tenet? So are they like in a particular section of the afterlife as a result? See, I had it as there are spiritual beings that are like physically gods, like in, in oh, a D&D okay. &D mm -hmm. sense. So there are, there's like humans, there are heroes mm -hmm. who could be like sainted or imbued with some divinity. And then there is like Hieronymus or like Grumsh who are literal divine beings. And then once they die, there is an afterlife for them. And I liked the idea of an afterlife for the gods that is just like, something that is essentially beyond our comprehension, something that is, you know, like we have these layers of the afterlife to help humans and mortal spirits kind of understand the different planes of existence, but to gods and divine beings, there, there's like, 
I, I feel like there's not really a necessity for something that is more rigid and more uh, ordered. And so to the gods, it's a matter of, okay, what is this existence? What is this afterlife? And it's like something that we literally cannot comprehend in a way, you know? Did these, mm-hmm. did these gods have a physical existence at one point in the earth or do they always just exist in the afterlife? Um, that's a good question. I, I didn't actually think that far. Um, but in terms of like a physical, uh, in, in terms of like a physicality, mm-hmm. I was thinking that they could have avatar forms, but not mm-hmm. necessarily something like, Hey, Thor is on Midgard and he's like, you know, or, or Loki is getting pregnant on Midgard again or something like that. I so, didn't so necessarily... basically these gods only have an embodiment in the afterlife and, and eventually their, whatever we consider their lifespan to be burns out and they end up residing in this particular plane of dead gods. It's metaphysical plane adjacent it's not okay. the plane in which they existed when they were alive right. as a concept it's like a different a place inside of it yeah okay it, it, it's it, it's quite puzzling yeah mm-hmm. I, I came up with this idea to be like there is something beyond our comprehension of mortal uh you know like afterlives and it's the realm of the dead gods and i thought that that first of all that's like a band name slash album that, yeah. name for it's a black metal is. thing for sure but like realm of the dead gods also just sounds cool, you know. It does. Mm-hmm. So two questions branching off of that: um, Do the gods retain their powers, and what if the gods were themselves the planes of the afterlife? Oh, I like that. Oh, so like a, a god of like law is essentially like a dead god of law is essentially the plane of axiomatic like nonsense or something like that. Yeah, or something to that effect. Where like they because it's even beyond like mortal comprehension, like they're just such a vast entity or a vast power that they are literally one of the planes that the spirits exist on. Mm. Uh, I have an idea that can throw in the concept of an afterlife related to your religion. Um, The plane of the afterlife that you go to is also in a sense, the body of the God that you worship. Okay, so we're saying then, which is interesting, this is tying it together. So we had established first that there was a realm where the gods were specifically when they died. But here you're saying maybe each of the planes are the gods. And so Mm -hmm. when you die, you Mm -hmm. end up on one of them, depending on what you believed in. Yeah. Okay, that's really interesting. So each of the... Each of these afterlives are literal gods, is what Mm -hmm. I'm hearing, right? Or the places you go to. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so uh, again, if we're D and Difying this, right, it'd be like, okay, I'm in the afterlife that is known as, um, I, I don't know, the Raven Queen, right? Like this is the, the, the afterlife of the Raven Queen, or this is the afterlife of Grumsh One Eye. And then those afterlives all look different, right? Okay. So now it builds a narrative function into it because remember your duration, your length of time that you say in a, in a realm depends on how famous you were, how remembered you are. So that would give a reason for you to be a great hero to spend more time with your God. Mm. But your your slate is clean, wiped clean. So, right. and, and but not that's only that- the trick. So why, the yeah. one thing is you don't know, you won't remember your history, but in life, you'd want to be with your God, whether or not you, you know what your mm. great history was, which is kind of humbling because it means that you may have been this amazing hero that saved everyone, right? Or this horrible villain that killed everyone and that your God approves of that. But when you're before your God, you know nothing and are no one. And mm. so you've lost mm. all that memory. Interesting. And not only that, but like, we're assuming that you get sorted into the God of your choosing, but that right. might not necessarily be the case, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it could be that you're like, a quiet, pious, you know, like beautiful soul who worship the God of art and whatnot. And then when your soul gets launched into the after- afterlife, you're like, uh, no, I've somehow gotten mixed up and now I'm in the planar chaos of evil, like the plane of chaotic evil, that type of thing, <laughs> right? And you're like, oh, okay. And then your soul reacts to that in some way. Um, which I think is interesting. The constant that I'm seeing here is like soul stuff, you know, from plane to plane and person to person and being to being. It also would explain Courtney's rule that, um, or no, I think it's the function of, of Chris's of, of like, if you're not remembered and you're sent back, like it's because 
you didn't really live up to whatever your belief was. So you have to kind of go back to earth and figure out what you really are. Right. Yeah. You're almost mm. immediately sent back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There, I mean, yeah, that's, that's kind of interesting. That sense of reincarnation and uh, actually my, my second tenant. Well, actually I can't even get into that because Daniel, you haven't given one of your tenants left. So let's hear that first. And then I can um, kind of go back and talk about how I fuck everything up. <laughs> sure. So, um, though I'm not sure which one to apply first. Um, I'll, I'll say, so one of my tenants is basically the afterlife didn't always exist. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's hmm. a, it's a creation perhaps with a specific intent that doesn't have a past like fully. So at some point it was created as a certain purpose. Hmm. Okay. What um, if it's the creation of like an ancient elder God who had this in mind as like a torture a place of torture mm, right for like the underling gods essentially like my, my concept is kind of um i mean I'm, I'm into that my concept is basically like prior to this there wasn't an afterlife you died and that was that mm-hmm. well i think we can tie it back to the realm of the dead gods as well as maybe the death of the first god is what created the afterlife mm-hmm. you know oh, because there's yeah. there, there's always like the creation story there's never the death story or the creation of the afterlife story. You know, okay. like there's a massive myth that could be happening. So the first God, maybe the gods assumed that they were immortal. When the first mm-hmm. God died, they kind of collapsed into this plane of existence into which they can pull the spirits of people instead of them being dissolved into nothing when, they, when the people died. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. Imagine actually how terrifying would that be in general is you're all gods and you all think that you're immortal and then mm-hmm. something happens to one of you and then that god is just no longer there and yeah. it, there's like this existential crisis <laughs> that the rest of you all feel it's like wait this can happen <laughs> what? Right, exactly. it just took a really long time so they never thought it could happen you know? yeah it's kind of like yeah. a star lives for billions of years right and then suddenly it dies and you know, if you're a bunch of other stars and you've all been around for billions of years and one of them explodes, you're like, what? <laughs> what is that supposed to happen? You know? I, I think that what we can also talk about here is that there's probably like, I like to think that the death of the first god is the impetus for other gods to create life. Like mm-hmm. we are, we are not like benevolent, you know, manifestations of divine beings where a necessity to keep those gods going in some way. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. So the acknowledgement of their own mortality created them to want to have prog- progeny. Yeah. And yeah. then those progeny are essentially food for the gods themselves. Yeah. Cause maybe there's to, maybe they realize that to sustain themselves, they have to have souls in themselves. So like in their plane of existence. So that's because, what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Like they hadn't done that prior. One of them died and then he became this amorphous blob. Right. So <laughs> I, I mean, but then again, like, in order to become planes, do they have to be dead? Or is it just like each god is a plane unto himself? I saw it as mm-hmm. each god was a uh, plane of itself. Mm-hmm. But as if the god dies or starts to be forgotten, that's where people will notice that the realm starts to like collapse oh, around. So the they edges. lose all mm-hmm. the souls in it too, and they dissolve into nothingness. Yeah. Well, I gotcha. think that they probably transfer to the realm of the dead gods, which becomes something that is mostly unknown. Actually, this is kind of fun because when when I was creating the layers, like we know what the afterlife looks like, right? Mm-hmm. But we don't know what the 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 afterlife for the gods looked like. So there's still some level of anxiety, still some level of uncertainty when it comes to death, you know. I I kind of picture if a god totally goes away and becomes obscure and then all the souls have to scatter to the other ones, Mm. that it becomes a bunch of them quickly like coming by and picking up what they see as the choice souls. Oh Mm. yeah, I like that. Like harvesting this dying realm. Absolutely. Oh, and and that's actually, oh, that's got to be horrifying to the witness in general, right? Because I don't, I don't want, like, at least for my tenant, I don't want there to be an alternative to nothing. So, like, mm-hmm. there, there, there is now. But, like, the alternative to nothing is nothing. So if, if yeah. someone dies and falls out of a realm, their spirit is gone. Like, they're, they're done. Potentially, yeah. I mean, okay, so I, I feel like at this point I have to come in with my tenant because it is kind of important as long as we're talking about 
the mortal realm and you know like Courtney brought up reincarnation um my my tenet kind of bucks that a little bit but not in a way that i think is irreconcilable uh but but basically what i wanted to have is there's a lot of movement that can happen between the different realms of afterlife um, but not back to the mortal realm. So if you want to affect the mortal realm after you die, it has to be done through proxy or by other means. Um, so, so this basically, like, I think that we can still do a reincarnation cycle, essentially, or especially if, you know, there is some level of wiping the slate clean. I think that tenet still works out. But I think that there's some level of, um, there's some degree of interest here where, if you're a, a dead person, you can't be resurrected. You can't go back, uh, essentially. So you're saying, other than other than the exception that you have a certain uh, limited time in the afterlife, right? Right. I, I think that those points are still fairly reconcilable because what yeah. I was interested in is there's no resurrection and then gods can't be brought back. It's yeah. a matter of like death is permanent, you know, like your soul mm -hmm. stuff might be reincarnated, but that aspect of you can't be brought back. There's no resurrection and there's no way for humans to interact with the land of the dead. It's not like this is Hades and you can like go in and bring a soul back or something like that. No, of yeah. course, as Daniel will tell you, there is always the exception to the rule. And that's where the fun kind of happens, where there mm -hmm. is like the rare instances of, you mm -hmm. know, like bringing someone back, but it's like, it, but that is very much not the norm, you know? Well, it, it makes sense because um, there seems to be a lack of physicality to this afterlife. Um, so I imagine whatever rule breaker can allow you to go there would mean leaving your body behind. And it's probably risky if you don't have a, if you're mm. not like in the bucket of a, a little clock of when you're going to return. So that might come about when we talk about factions or other things yeah. that come out of mm -hmm. this. One thing I'm noticing as well, and this is kind of the implication, is that these afterlives and these afterworlds are not physical places that you can go to, much like, you know, Mount Olympus or, uh, you know, Asgard or something like that. There's no rainbow bridge that you physically can cross and get to as a mortal. These places are extra planar and, and magical in a way that we really haven't discussed, you know? It just seems like what we've established is um, an idealist kind of view of the universe, which means to say that um, the, the material world is one thing and there's um, a non-physical realm, you know, of souls. That's mm. the ideal. And so it seems like in order to be in the non-physical realm, you have to be non-physical. You have to shut off your body. Mm. Interesting. Yes. So my second tenet was going to be that the afterlife can be visited by mortals, um, <laughs> but whoops, um, though it is dangerous and likely comes at a cost. Ooh, so. well, there we go. Okay. I mean, that's, yeah. we have to have a way to do it now that we said we can't, right? Of yeah, course. Yeah, that's how tenets work. <laughs> it's, the way that tenets work, I don't think we've ever actually sat down and explained tenets, but they are things that people bring in that are true statements of fact, right? And so once it's been said, it now has to be reconciled. So my, so actually, again, I don't think that this is terribly difficult to do. You said that mortals can visit. I'm willing to be like, yeah, that's fine, but you can't go back. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I could, Ooh. I could go with that. I mean, I, I could easily see like some dangerous ritual where, again, it seems to be the missing of the, the you're lacking a clock might be a problem. So you know, if you if you die and you go to the afterlife you're either going to come back or you're going to eventually come back. Right. Because it's all about um, how famous you were, how long you stay there. Right. But if you mm. put yourself into the afterlife without a clock, I don't know what happens to you, but that sounds like a dangerous thing. Uh, I, yeah. I think I have, I think I have an interesting idea that I is um, kind of reconciles both in order for mortals to visit the plane, they have to swap with a preexisting soul so it's it's a matter of your you will embody that soul for a while, but that soul will then embody your physical body. And so it's it's like you don't know what you're going to get when you're swapping with someone in the afterlife. And then that person comes back and can just do whatever the fuck they want with your body. And that's, uh, I think, the toll that you pay is you're you're willing to give everything up, including your physicality, including your physical body 
in order to swap with someone else, but it's at chance, it's at random, right? Mm -hmm. Do their clocks swap too, potentially? Like, that's another risk. I I think that part of the risk would be involved is you don't know how much time you have when you swap with someone. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you could swap with someone whose time is literally just about to go out. And they get reincarnated in a different body. Now you're fine. Exactly. And it's like, well, <laughs> yeah. fuck, I've been trying to do this for five lifetimes, but I keep <laughs> getting fucked over by the way that this overly convoluted system works. You know, like that type of thing. Awesome. Oh, wait a minute. That's also mm-hmm. the only way that you can maintain your identity as immortal as well, isn't it? Oh, by continuously. You like, like back and you tell stories about yourself no 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 by yeah. because you you maintain all of your memories as yeah. a mortal by swapping with someone in the afterlife that's the yeah. only mm-hmm. way that you maintain it i like that because yeah. clearly some sort of sorcery or you know devious has evolved at accomplishing this and you're taking on this risk but the benefit is you know who you are and yeah. that could cause all kinds of conflicts and ruckuses if you have bad intentions going to the afterlife Oh, right, that's right. really fucking fun. I like that idea a lot. It is. Especially going with Chris's idea of like the afterlife doesn't know what is going on in the real world. Like if you come in there with all this knowledge of what's actually there, you're going to like really fuck things up. It could it could also not be nefarious. Like yeah. say you're a lo- your your lover died and you want to go find them and so you went out of your way to swap bodies with someone in the afterlife so you can find her. She of won't course. remember you when you get to her. So mm. now it's like, okay, what do you do? Are you going to try and bring her back somehow? And then there's a whole story, you know, you have to work with. Yeah, I mm. mean like I think most of the time when people try and go to the land of the dead, it's to bring back people they love, not to like, you know, uh dethrone God. It's, Mm -hmm. it's, they're they're often trying, it's, it's often, you know, Eurydice and Orpheus. It's not a matter of trying to chop down the fucking world tree. Really? That actually, that's not surprising. That's not surprising knowing everyone. I was going to say Nietzsche. That's what he did when he got there. What? He dethroned God? He He tried to destroy everything. (laughs) (laughs) He, he cast his level nine, like, you know, God destruction philosophy (laughs) spell. Yeah. <laughs> You're not real. <laughs> oh, no, it, oh, he he went to the plane of the gods and cast banishment only to <laughs> prove his theory correct. All right, so uh who has a tenant next that they want to talk about? I do. Yeah, I know, Chris. That's my that's my segue oh. so you can start talking oh. about it. I know that oh. you do. That's why I asked the right. question okay. to begin with. Well, that works out well then as a segue. That I will now perform. Your 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 mastery of the segue <laughs> somehow gets worse as episodes continue, <laughs> not better. I don't understand it. <laughs> it's I'm establishing a joke. It's a gag. Anyhow. It's um, not though. It's, it's I, I know that it's not. No, people come in for it. It's it's great. <laughs> yes, Chris. That's what people listen to the podcast for, is you your know. Weird esoteric we, jokes that only we, you and one other person will laugh at. That's it. Thank you, whoever that may be. <laughs> yeah, they're they're definitely on the Discord. Actually, no, I'm going to say it now. They're not on the Discord, so you will get no validation for this, and we'll continue this dead joke forever. Moving on from there. Uh, speaking of dead jokes, oh, good segue. Yeah, I mm, nice. To be that. <laughs> That there was a level above. We've talked about how each plane might be a god, a dead god, a dying god, an existing one. Um, I wanted it to be that all of this kind of exists inside of one uh, loosely held together sphere that not even the gods want to go out into. And this Mm. is the area that you have to transverse to go to plane A to plane B. And the mythos is that that is the body or the realm of either the literal god of death or the grim reaper and some people when they're traveling they're just never heard from again oh interesting i mean that that kind of tracks with what we had already i mean Mm -hmm. we had that loose kind of mythology about the god of creation being the first to die and i can't see why you know, the God of creation can't suddenly just transform into the God of death. And that is you're using his body as a bridge between realms. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe maybe that the realm of the dead is that what you're talking about, and it's it's become so vast because it's the oldest mm. that the rest are sort of floating in his sea of stuff. Mm. Gross. Yeah, you got to be careful what stuff you're floating in there. Mm, yeah. I was picturing dark water pirates, like from our cyberpunk episode. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Crystalline you're, spheres. Floating you're you're real water lucky water. if that's water you're swimming in. Let's put it that way. <laughs> <Carl> <laughs> I was picturing it, it is a realm of personified concepts that can't really die, but don't also exist. Not in a hard substance. What do you mean by that? Because my brain is like going real goofy with that. I'm sorry. Oh, I meant like, uh, while there might be a god of justice, you actually can't hold or like literally grab justice. Uh, You can't you there is a concept of mercy but there's not even no physical representation of mercy you can't like say oh i'm gonna take a pound of mercy from uh over here Mm -hmm. this is where since those concepts don't have a physical body they exist here but they're also not alive and they're not dead oh my god that's Mm -hmm. that's that's, it's again you're going back to this philosophy bits because this is almost like the ideal forms Mm -hmm. that have been lost into the void they're just floating out there and they had they're in the wreckage of this this realm of the dead and they can never be gotten rid of because there's certain concepts or forms that are immortal like a soul is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sure i mean that 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 totally tracks what we got going on here for for sure um yeah yeah all right and i I feel like it could potentially just be dangerous to be out there. I mean, obviously we already established like sometimes things just go missing out there, but in terms of like, even if you survive, like is your mind still the same because you've seen this like stuff that we just cannot comprehend. It's like elder chore type stuff. Maybe that's why it's easy for the gods to kind of traverse Mm. that area. But for mortals, it's actually really dangerous. Yeah. And you know what? It might be really scary about it, too, is because since there was a time when the afterlife didn't exist, it's possible the boundaries of this exterior sphere, the sphere of ideas, the realm of the dead, beyond that boundary is nothing. So it's like Mm. non-existence. The further you go, you, you kind of disappear into non-existence. And those who have who were never preserved prior to this. Like they're outside the sphere. They don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. I also see it as a place of where say there's someone whose name is so infamous that they believe that they will never die or rather never reincarnate. Mm -hmm. They will go out into essentially non-existence to unravel themselves and cease existing. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It's just like, it's like kind of like taking Karan's boat out into the waters of the underworld, but instead of like going to the afterlife, you're going into the void itself and disappearing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, It reminds me of um, an SCP story that I once read about like a scientist who gets kind of caught in this eternal void and does literally start to unravel over time. Like his body is slowly pulled apart. It's pretty gross. Um, but yeah, I, I really like that idea. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but there's also the implication of what you can bring with you. Like you as a mortal travel between that area. And we're always thinking, well, what happens when those people get lost? What happens when people bring stuff with them to the next realm? Well, can they do that? Because don't they come into the afterlife as... Um, no, no, no. I mean, old? when you travel between the realms. So, oh, so you mean mentally, yeah, exactly. Oh. Well, not mentally, but like physically, when you go from like, let's say the God of law and order to the God of SVU, like you're picking up something you, I mean, not always, but you might pick something up while you're traversing that bridge of the dead God, you know, Chris said, we established they weren't physical realms. They're not. That's what I'm saying. Wait, wait, what do you, wait, hold on. What do you, what do you mean? Because Chris is suggesting that these realms, <laughs> mm-hmm. these are like there is a sphere where yeah. all of these gods lie within, and then the dead god is the bridge between the realms. Isn't that what right. we've discussed? I, I was saying that that is what people believe, since people don't actually want to go out and go out there because there's lions and tigers and bears and such. There, that is just the mythos that has kind of only existed in the afterlife of mm-hmm. what people say. There's like an afterlife mythos of what people believe there. The reason why I'm asking is because like in the traditional D&D planes, and some of them, I guess, are planes of the afterlife, they're still physical realms, like they're material realms. 
But what we're talking about seems to be that these are not physical places because you leave your body behind, that these are places that are of, of, of idealism. They're idealists, they're right. souls, soul spaces. So are we talking about transferring our experiences while in the afterlife from A to B? Or are we talking about there's like non-physical objects, say, in these afterlife realms that can be carried with souls back and forth? So like, I think what I'm, I think what we're getting at is like, when it comes to the mortal afterlife, we need planes or we need some kind of a physicality, a physical space, which is represented by concepts or gods or something like that. Okay. So like the the realms that they're in, there has to be some kind of like a representation of things, even though everything is technically immaterial is what you're saying. Right. And and I think that when we go beyond that, like I think that's where we start to talk about the afterlife of dead gods where it becomes so outside of our understanding that it oh. stops becoming physical. Like okay. the, the, the afterlife of, of mortals are these axiomatic planes of gods, you know, like representations of gods themselves, because that's what mortals need in order to understand what's right. happening to mm. their soul in order to mm. allow that kind of cycle of rebirth to happen. But when gods die, they go beyond that physical that physical realm to something that is un, unknowable. Right. right, and I think I think what would be neat is um because this makes me think of the movie What Dreams May Come. I think it was called the the one that was about yeah with Robin afterlife. Williams and Cuba Gooding Jr. Absolutely, yeah. Like I could imagine say if I let's say I I I I die, I go to the to the realm of my god. Let's say it's the realm of law or something. And in my life, like I was a lawyer, and so in the realm of, of the law, I appear and I have with me a, a scale. And to me, that represents to just my sense of justice, but it's not really a real physical thing. It's it's an, a thing of ideas that I physically right. have in the realm because it makes sense to me. Yes. But then like you're saying, say like, I took I hitched a ride into um, uh, Chris's Sea of the Void, basically. Like I will encounter things that are not meant to reflect um, ideas I understand or forms mm-hmm. I understand. And so that's what could cause my own disintegration. And I'm not, even though I'm carrying the object with me, which is really a part of myself because it doesn't really exist. And and I also think one of the terrifying things, it's not like these concepts have like a label across them. It says it's just like, no, we don't have to worry about this one. It's a it's the sense of right and wrong. It's just like, right. oh, no, this is existential dread that is currently underneath <laughs> yeah. us and going to that is neat. swallow us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Turns out that when you start talking about metaphysical concepts such as the afterlife, Things get complicated. Who knew? <laughs> but I think uh, that's so cool narratively because now you can have these souls who have come from the material world who have these objects with them that represent parts of their personality or their memory. Mm-hmm. Not their memory, but who they are. So they might even right. wonder, because they don't have any memories, why do I have the scale with me? Why am I carrying right. the shield? Mm-hmm. Because it's a reminder of what they were, even though they don't know. Yeah, I actually, I like that idea that, um, you know, you come back, you know, or, or you're born into the afterlife with your soul or your memory wiped clean, but you have a totem of your after of your mortal life yeah. in some case. And there's mm-hmm. also the idea of um, there is a, a, the interpretation of your totem. You know, when you look at a scale to some that might mean justice to others, that might mean that you're just a merchant. And to uh-huh. others still, it could mean that you had to give up a pound of flesh within your mortal life. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of, or let's say that you tipped the scale in some way, or you had Mm. your thumb on the scale, you were a cheat. I mean, there's so many different interpretations of the scale in and of itself. Yeah. I mean, Mm. this is just like my limited observation of like what totems could be. And it, it continues to keep things like really muddled in a lot of ways, which I think is important to, to kind of keeping the, the cool and mystique of the afterlife, you know? Daniel, you are the only one who has a tenant left. And then we got to get back into uh, other stuff, which includes creating a world anchor. So go ahead and hit us with the last tenant, Daniel. Uh, the last tenant is the afterlife has run out of space. Ooh. Interesting. Does this mean, I suppose in the in the overall concept, does that mean that there's too many gods? I take it to mean that you can't, continue to f- put more people into the cycle and some of them who can't fit mm. will end up just dying permanently mm. well that would that would explain courtney's reincarnation tenet as well you know because it's it's like okay well 
may, maybe not everyone, you know, like dies permanently, but they're, that's when they get shunted back to the mortal realm. It's like, we don't have space right now. You, you're just, oh, just no, go no. back home. Uh, no, I mean, they don't get to go to the afterlife. They, they can't fit. They can't fit in the cycle at all. They immediately die. So See, they're that's, just like deleted from existence. Yeah, that's and horrifying. Then, the afterlife is out of space. <laughs> okay, but, but do mortals know about that? Um, I don't know. I guess they would have to for it to be interesting narratively, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, not necessarily because the gods could know, but not necessarily the mortals. Mm. Oh, and there could be like a cult that worships that the god that knows this and the word spreads. Then they could figure it out. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but I also imagine that it's like you're bleeding. I mean, soul stuff has been really important to like the generation of this kind of concept pantheon. at yeah. large and yeah the pantheon at large so what ha- what does that mean that it's too successful like does does that mean that in some way you're we're creating something outside of the realm that we know it as is or i think it suggests that cause i don't we haven't really figured out how there seems to be a fixed number of souls cycling through everything but obviously we breed and there's more people and therefore more souls so maybe um the fact of our successfulness as a species, like the more of us there are, the the harder it becomes to sustain us because whatever this afterlife that was created can only hold so many souls mm. and the gods can mm. only be sustained for so long with a certain number of amount of souls. So I guess it could be a problem for them the more we are. Right. So so I, I uh, one thing I do want to kind of like explore it a little bit more is nothing like it's not like this soul just is instantly obliterated into nothingness that soul has to go somewhere it might be outside of the realm of our understanding but i think it's more interesting on a narrative aspect if something happens to that soul that's outside of our known system of like how the afterlife works whether it be in like it goes to like the raw creation of another plane of existence or something like that I think that something else has to happen rather than just pure nihilistic why? obliteration of like the soul. Why though? Like I think it's narratively interesting for people to fear actual total annihilation. I I agree, but I think that there's a lot of like you could be you could have an entirely different hook with this idea that it's not just obliteration, it's something else. I think that there's something to that that could be really interesting, you know? there, there. I, I Don't get me wrong, I like the idea of like a pure nihilistic obliteration. That's really cool in a narrative sense, but what, what could happen besides just that obliteration is that that soul stuff could be used elsewhere by an entity that's hitherto unknown to this system of afterlife that we've created. I think oh, that yeah. you have yeah, I'm more sure you opportunities. Could, you can do that. Yeah. You can right. do that. I'm I'm trying to point back to the afterlife didn't always exist, and prior to that, uh, people just died. So sure. if they can't fit into the afterlife, then they can't go anywhere, and they die. To me, to me, this feels like soul runoff. You know, where like you could have yeah. a 95 percent efficient machine, right? But something's going to happen to that five percent. And I think it's a more interesting story to figure out what happens to that 5% of, you know, like lost soul stuff than it is to just assume that it's like obliterated forever. I feel like there's more of a story in figuring out what happens to it than just assuming it's gone forever. Now that might be part of the mythology is that, oh, your soul is just fucking obliterated for no reason. But I think that from a narrative perspective, there is something more to it, you know? I mean, what if it, what if those souls that are run off went into the void and somehow interacted with that expanse that is completely incomprehensible? Um, but is that really uh, like the void isn't, it's a place, right? So it's not like going away. They're just being incorporated into the uh, Chris's kind of soup. Sort of, but mm-hmm. um, I guess not necessarily as their own souls. It's like converted into something else. Mm. Mm-hmm. it's creation you know like you i i don't necessarily want to go into another cyclical idea yeah but there the idea of this soul stuff kind of congealing into something different or something new um i think that's i think that's really cool and really interesting like it could be are you creating new gods from that congealed soul stuff or is something else happening maybe that's how gods get created in the first place you know 
you could also just leave it as it's not something that's known. It's known that it's changing, but it doesn't know what it's changing into. Mm -hmm. Because it's happening on such like a, a long span of mortal time yeah, that we like can't correct. even. It's kind of like it. creation seeing its uncreation. Uh, no one knows what's going to happen, but uh, it's the mystery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think in a really simplistic sense, right? On, on a really basic level, to make it an easy narrative aspect, you could say that's the source of magic. But I think that's kind of a lame cop out. And so I'm going to say no to that right away. <laughs> I still I still think, to, personally to me, it's more interesting to deal with non-existence than it is to add more things to the realm. Um, like to me, I think it's more narratively interesting, the possibility that you don't exist. Like I think that's something, mm -hmm. especially in fantasy, we don't explore because mm -hmm. we want to have mythic archetypes. We want things to live forever. But the idea that things end, like I think is more terrifying. Well, I think I'm not arguing that aspect, Daniel. I think that I'm arguing for, we just don't know what happens to it. Maybe, maybe that's the mystery, you know, like you can assume that, how, how can I, how can I explain this? I think that we can look at that and be like, yes, that is how we approach it. That is how we, as mortals see it, but there is something beyond our comprehension that happens outside of pure obliteration. Because, you know, if we want to look at it from a, on a physics standpoint, you can't completely obliterate something. It has to be converted into something else, right? Like well, if we we're, we're to... talking about though, materialism versus idealism, right? We're talking about souls that persist no matter what. And in materialism, there are no souls. So what, what right. we've created, I think, so far is, a, is a, a fantasy where we both have a materialist reality and an idealist reality. Yes. It's just that souls exist in a certain bubble. And and the fact that they cannot exist is what makes the two concepts like be able to mm. be married. That's what I think is interesting, because if you eliminate the possibility that you could be totally destroyed, then you don't have this duality anymore. You really just have idealism. It's just that non-existence is some other form of being. That's why mm. I think it's really interesting if it's possible for you to really be annihilated. Mm -hmm. So, 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 question, Daniel. When, when you, what, uh, maybe, maybe I didn't really kind of make this clear, mm. or maybe it's, maybe I'm just arguing my point wrong. But w when I think that the soul is, you know, like changed, I, I'm assuming that that soul stops becoming an identity or an, an individual. So in essence, you are, conver just like when your body dies, it is essentially disintegrated and reincorporated within the physical world in another way. I imagine that the soul does something different and, and you're, you're, in, you're more interested in the idea that that soul just simply ceases to be and doesn't get reincorporated into some kind of world in another sense. Is that what you're suggesting? Exactly. Because like it seems okay. like in this fantasy, identity is your soul. It's wrapped up in somehow. And even though it might get converted and you lose your memories you come back that means somewhere in that loss of memories there's still you in there somewhere right i'm saying there has to if, if there's going to be the danger of being annihilated that means no identity no soul nothing <laughs> right i i think i'm arguing yeah. mm -hmm. the same thing but for uh, on a different level you know like i like the idea of your your identity being destroyed and dissolved and turned into something else mm -hmm. or Removed completely is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, Daniel's think going for like. I think we're you, arguing yeah. a pretty close point here. Pretty I, close. I, yeah. yeah, it's it's just a matter of uh, semantics. And speaking of semantics, we're very good at that. Uh, <laughs> but I think it's time that we move on to create our world anchor, which is something that is just within the realm of possibility that we're going to do here. So we're going to roll some dice. We've got themes. And the first thing that we're going to be focusing on within this world and the theme that we're going to be rolling with today is survival, very appropriate, mm. all mm. things considered. And the thing that we're going to be focusing on within that survival is a place related to the theme. We've got the theme of survival and a place related to that theme. What are we going to be focusing on here exactly? I guess whose survival are we talking about? Yeah, that's th that's one of the first questions we have to ask. So my idea is there is perhaps there is a plane or an afterlife 
that exists without the necessity of a God. And so this is kind of like the coward's afterlife in a lot of ways where it's, I want to maintain my identity and I'm going to go here. That's not associated to a God instead. So you're saying they go there knowing who they are. Yes. And, and that is like, that's where the survival comes from, where the survival of the self of the identity is where that happens. Could this have been a pocket, uh, afterlife created by someone who is finagling his way into the afterlife. I like the idea that it's created by a mortal for yeah. some yeah. reason I that like is really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it, it like as a result is an unstable place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, that's really fun. I think it's kind of like the agnostics hangout, right? Or it's like, it's, I'm not sure about any of this. So I'm just going to hedge my bets and go for this concept instead, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. I kind of picture it as ex not existing on a layer of all the things that we've been talking about, but more as like a boil or a dot on the side of this mm -hmm. non-existence. Oh, it's an in-between for sure. Yeah. Also, I don't know why, but I'm picturing like a tavern, like, a supremely yeah. crowded tavern for some reason, you know, <laughs> where it's like, oh, you showed up too, huh? And like, I think what's interesting as well is that it, it's a place for where people go and sure you can exist, but you can't really do much else because it's not like you can affect the mortal realm very much, right? And it's not like if you travel between the realms, then I feel like your identity gets wiped almost as soon as you enter some other place, you know? Yeah, because getting to this pocket realm seems to be that you're not swapping with someone else. So you're right. really just going, you're leaving your body behind and going there. Okay, I, I think I just came up with an interesting I, name for it. It's the agnostics polyp. So it's like a little, like Chris said, it's like a weird little growth on the already pre, or on the pre-existing like body that is the afterlife, you know? I could also see uh, part of it being... Uh, made up of like the detris of other universes, not mm -hmm. other universes, but other afterlifes that have kind of come out of vogue. Mm. And mm, yeah. like, so it's a mishmash of other things. It can still be a tavern, but maybe it looks uh, in one place a lot like classical Greek architecture, and then another one uh, like nothing but pure black stone. Yeah. Could it be a tugboat like in a sea of trash? Like, some trash? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's a trash island. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's actually, that's actually horrifying to conceive, to think of that. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's ways you get to it too. Like, so maybe you can arrive there by not being a believer. Like you wash up on the trash shore of metaphysics to this place. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe like when you're approaching, you know, when your soul is approaching your got your destination and then you like, you're like, actually, you know, fuck this. And you try and escape. <laughs> right. That's what happens. Like your body gets cast out into the oblivion. Yeah. But then like, there's a slim chance that some people end up here at this mm -hmm. kind of trash island for, for souls. Yeah. Maybe it's like not really grounded in any place, like not really connected to anything. Mm -hmm. So it does kind of move around like that boat idea. I'm picturing mm -hmm. like a house moving castle kind of thing. Sure. Where if yeah. you're lucky enough to be there. It can scoop you up, but otherwise you're, right. you're fucked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if it's also created and sustained by the very notion of like, ugh, of, of like, because, because what's protecting it from being detected and obliterated? One, I think the motion certainly helps. So the fact that it's hard to find protects it from just being completely obliterated, but there's something else that's protecting it. I would imagine. I almost feel like since people, I don't know, believe in it in some way, that it itself has become like a small god. Oh, mm. uh, yeah. But so maybe, so you're saying that the lack of belief, whether that's through agnosticism or simple atheism, has created that idea, has reified that concept in this this idealist yeah. realm. Because yeah, all the gods yeah. are reified by ideas, but mm -hmm. so is non-belief. Non <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so rather than like a personification, it's just given like a physical uh, manifestation through a place rather than a, mm -hmm. a person or a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so it's like it, Planescape, but better. 
<laughs> it, it, it also kind of reminds me of like ego the living planet or like living planets in a sense you know yeah um but with less personification like with less with less personality overall for sure yeah. that's neat i like that all right so we've got trash planet island boat thing we've got a very complex system of beliefs and afterlives which i'm super down with by the way i think this is all really interesting uh now we get to see we get to roll a twist and see how all of this philosophical metaphysical nonsense comes to a head when suddenly it has to become anime or there's a trap involved we're gonna roll a d20 actually it's more than that it's we're, we're gonna roll a die and see what kind of twist we get may god have mercy on all our souls Oh my God! Really? Okay. Um, what one is it? <laughs> so this one is everything has a scientific explanation. Yes. Oh, <laughs> love God. it. Damn it. Yeah, I'm with Chris on this one. Like, I love it. I can do it. I can do fuck it. Fuck's sake. I'm into it. And of course, Daniel's the one who's fucking excited. <laughs> it's become <for> sci-fi. <laughs> uh, God damn it. Okay. Uh, well, we're gonna, you, you're gonna have to see how we reconcile this twist next episode on World Build With Us. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, remember that if you want us to build your world, like we did with uh, Jacobs in his prompt, you can always email us over at worldbuildwithus at gmail.com, or you can shoot us a tweet and follow us about world building and whatnot over on Twitter at Let's World Build. You can always come and join us and talk about our episodes and our community over on Discord. And if you're feeling particularly generous, you can always give us money over on Patreon where you get a bevy of interesting and cool little perks. Uh, and again, and, and more importantly, most importantly, you get to support us and the podcast so we can continue to make weird and interesting, like what the fuck with this setting, you guys? Uh, every week, which is what we do. Uh, but yeah, that'll do it for this week's episode of World Build with us. Remember that we love you very much and we will see you next week as we continue to get through this together. Bye.